Hey all, and welcome back to Radical Slice. My name is Eric. Uh, this is the next installment in my attempt to kind of like recreate the old NES game, Kung Fu. Um, if you haven't seen the earlier episodes, it's probably better to, to start there. There's a playlist. You can find it in the description. Uh, but hey, man, if you just want to jump in part way and see what's up, feel free. I'm not going to stop you. Um, in this episode, <laughs> primarily focusing on uh, crouching combat and like different enemy type or like the the only other enemy type other than the one i already have um and there's quite a bit of like tweaking of pixel art too at one point i'm like i'm gonna make a quick graphical tweak and then that turns into after it was sped up probably about three and a half minutes of me trying to get like crouching graphics to look good and i mean i speed these up like 10x so it was a lot of pixel art tweaking going on in real time. But anyway, I don't know, it's, it's super sped up. Uh, hopefully you get a kick out of seeing how the graphics evolve uh, and how the crouching combat works. And I will catch you all on the flip side of this one. So yeah, the scrolling and stuff is working pretty good. Um, but the problem happens when we're not in the middle of the screen and I try to attack. And uh, yeah, his, uh, we got some disembodied limbs. So I'm just gonna go back. <laughs> and uh, not hard code the values for those positions and, and that should fix that. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I just replaced the hard-coded values with non-hard-coded values and our little bounding boxes are, are back. And so is his legs <laughs> and, and piss. I'm sure he's pretty stoked about that. I love his machine gun kick too. I know I'm gonna have to nerf this, but man, it's so much fun. All right, so next let me turn to the crouching bit and at least get him to crouch, uh, like at least get the appearance ready to go. Man, I don't know if I'm gonna stay with this, but this is just cracking me up right now. This sprite is just like, I know it's about half and half between upper body and lower body, but it just looks like he's like 90% head right now and it's, it's killing me. That's a little bit better. He's got sort of a, like a mini Mario vibe going on, but I've also got the fists kind of cocked and ready to go so i think i think this will i think this will work So I think for now, these three sprites will get the job done. So here's the sort of crouching ready state. Here's the punching state. And here's the kicking state. I might have to throw some sort of antic in there. Um, I'm not sure what to do about that yet. Give me a second. Okay, I threw some uh, antic sprites in there too. So here's the, the static state, winding up punch, full extension. Stag state, winding up kick, full extension. And I'll have to add like the uh, the fist and the sort of the sort of like sweep kick thing I ended up with for the kick thing. Uh, I'll have to like append those to the fully extended sprites. Um, so let me add these player states in first. I guess we'll start with crouch uh, and we'll go from there.
Okay, one of those fun things, but uh, hey, the, the crouch kind of works, but he, <laughs> I have to update the Y position because otherwise he just, he does this, which is great, but not what I'm going for. I think uh, I've got, I need to check the actual dimensions on these bounding boxes to make sure that like punching when you're crouching and punching when you're standing isn't like all that different in terms of range and coverage. Uh, same for kicks. That's, it's pretty goofy looking. I think I'm okay with this. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna just tweak some more parameters, but otherwise I think it's looking pretty good. One thing I did notice with the code that I'd like to go back and fix, though, is a lot of these update functions that I have for the states are kind of just doing the same thing right there. They're just um, checking the, the delta time uh, for like how much time to advance uh, to, uh, left until we advance to the next state and then just resetting to whatever some state is. So I can probably optimize this quite a bit and I might spend a little bit of time refactoring to do that to just cut down the amount of tokens I'm using. But as a quick and dirty solution, hey, we've got we've got punches, we've got kicks. Let's go to the large thing. Hold on. We've got we've got punches, we've got kicks, we've got punches and kicks that way, and we've got crouching and punches and kicks in both directions, crouching too. So uh, yeah, I think we're off to a good start. Um, I think for the next thing to think about. Oh, now that we have crunching, or sorry, crouching. I keep saying crunching. Now that we have crouching combat. Uh, I think we can go ahead and add enemies that we can only hit when we're crouching for the next step. So little tiny enemies that would fit um, underneath the range of the kick, which if, if I could actually stop it on time, I could show you. Right there. So we got to fit an enemy. An enemy has to have a bounding box smaller than that, or we have to move that bounding box up a little bit. So yeah, that's going to be next. This should be tiny enough. Um, we'll have to make the hitbox like real small. Um, I may have to shave like one more pixel off of this, or like I was saying, slide the hitbox for the kick up a little bit to make it work. But let's uh, let's go with this. All right. In order to add the logic to handle two different kinds of baddies, I'm going to do a little bit of refactoring here. Right now, we have a new baddie function, uh, which is called once when we spawn a baddie here. 
but it only supports one kind of baddie, right? So it probably will need two different functions, uh, one for the big tree guys and one for the little flower guys. And we'll just pass in an extra argument here. Uh, so this is like the total number of baddies. This is the direction they face. We'll also need like some sort of baddie type or something like that. So let me do a little bit of refactoring here. happy with how the collision is looking, I think. Let me jump over to Pico8. We'll do a couple of runs through this. So here come the flowers. <laughs> um, I haven't actually looked to see if the animation looks weird or not yet, but you can see um, I'm punching like just over them, and I had to tweak the bounding box to the punch, so it, it it's actually a little bit higher than the visual fist, which I think I'm okay with. I mean, really the height of the thing doesn't really impact how it's going to land um, with uh, with regard to the trees anyway. And then the kick is like way above. I also tweaked the kick's uh, bounding box. And you can see that just like the trees, uh, the <laughs> the little guys are, are stopped and, and hugging me to death. So I should be able to punch them. Yeah, like that. All right, cool. Uh, so that works just fine. So let me remove the bounding boxes and check the animation. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how things are looking right now. So yeah, the kick and punch both go over top and you have to crouch to get them. So that, that doesn't look too bad. Um, I still am not super happy with like the way the kick and punch feels. Like I kind of want a little bit more wind up uh, on them, but I can adjust that as I go, I think. Uh, what I do want to do though is, so. As a sort of quick hack, I just replaced the call to spawn trees with the call to spawn flowers. Also, collision's weird. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I need to edit the spawn function to allow us to spawn either a flower or a tree uh, in the group. So let me play around with that and do a little refactoring. All right, so this is pretty cool. I was originally going to, or I think it's pretty cool. I was originally going to just pass in an extra argument here for the type of baddie, um, but I decided to pass in a table or a list instead. So in main, what we can do now is when we call spawn, we can just say tree, flower, tree, or, or any combination thereof. Um, and then in our spawn function, it'll just loop over the baddie types that we pass in, and there's four each here. And if it's a tree, we'll add a tree. And if it's a flower, we'll add a flower. So when we call tree flower tree, um, if we replay this and spawn some baddies, here we go, tree flower tree. And then we can just boom, 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 like that. So that's working pretty well. All right, you know what we haven't done uh, at all yet? <laughs> Is uh, check in with our list of actual requirements. So let, let's go to the spreadsheet and see where we're at. Uh, so yeah, hero movement, I'd say that's that's done. Oops, we want the background. That's done. Uh, combat, yeah, sure. I think that's done for now. Help, we have not done yet. Baddie movement is done. It took a little while. Uh, they do take damage, but they don't damage the player yet. Uh, bosses we haven't messed with yet. We haven't really messed with levels yet, although some of the work that we just did on the spawning baddie thing will contribute to that. Okay, so before I work on player health, uh, what I'm thinking I want to do first is fix a couple of bugs. The first one being uh, that the player can just walk right through, uh, guys. <laughs> that's, that's like not great. Um, and also, I want to just make sure that the 
um, crouching attacks and the standing attacks have the same reach. Right now they like pretty, even just visually, you can tell that this punch goes farther than this punch. The kick might actually be close, maybe a pixel or two away. Um, but I'm going to try and figure out a way to test that. I think what I'm going to do is just draw like a vertical bar at the maximum extent of the punch and see how it behaves as I go from crouching to standing. Okay, so I was right. You can sort of see, let me just kill these guys. You can sort of see, um, what I do is I just, uh, I set up a variable in main. I just cheated and kind of used a global and I called it extent and I just initialized it to zero. Um, and then I pass that into the player's draw function here. Um, and also return the value, or I update it based on the return of the player's draw function. And then I'm just drawing a, a vertical line with that X value. So in draw, in player's draw, um, I get this last extent. And then if I'm punching or crouch punching, I just update it uh, with like the, the sort of leftmost value of the punch. And I'm only looking at if the player is facing to the left, right? Um, so what that allows me to do is, um, as I walk through here and I, I punch, um, if the player doesn't do any attacks, the line stays where it is. But if he does, uh, you'll see that it updates. And you can tell that if I punch standing up, it goes a little bit further. If I punch crouching, it's a little bit pulled in a little bit. So I need to make some tweaks to the uh, crouching punch to make it go out a little bit further uh, so that like the two have the same reach. Okay, so now the extent of the punch should be the same, but uh, his fist looks like super long now, so let me just make a quick graphical tweak. So I'm just playing here, but I was tweaking the crouch sprite and I kind of like this one a little bit better. He's kind of like kneeling down, getting ready to like unload. So I think I'm gonna try and like, uh, just work this in with the other crouching attack animations.
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that very rapid um, pixel art session slash uh, tweaking of collision variables. So I did not start on the player health stuff yet, but um, not only did I make the crouch stuff look a lot better, I think anyway, um, I also aligned a lot of the bounding boxes for the collisions. So uh, we can start by punching and we can see that the extent of the punch is like right there. And then if we kick, we'll see it goes out a little bit further. And that works on both sides. So there's the punch and there's the kick. So the kick has a little bit more range. And now the standing punch and the crouching punch are both the same distance, which is what we want to see. And similarly, the standing kick and the crouching kick, which I think looks like way cooler now, even though I have like really slow TTLs on the frames, um, are also the same distance, which is also what we want to see. So yeah, this is looking pretty good. One thing I still have to check is that the crouching kick, uh, I'm sorry, that the, yeah, I guess that makes sense. One thing I still want to check is that like the, uh, the kick and the punch both go over the heads of the flowers real quick. I think I didn't change anything that would break that, but let me just, uh, give it a shot real quickly here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Let me spawn from the other side just to make sure. Yeah, good. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> okay, great. All right, so now I will work on the health. Now that I have the uh, uh, co the combat stuff looking the way I want it. Yeah, there you have it. Quick, quick graphical tweak. Famous last words from from previous Eric. There, I decided to cut this episode here just because uh, a after this it gets super deep into the hug of death stuff and player health and. Uh, this episode would have gotten super long if I included all that, so I cut it here. But thank you very much for your time and your attention. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that whatever you're working on, uh, it's going real well. And if you're just playing games, I hope that's going real well, too. And I will catch you all for the next episode next week. Bye for now, y'all.